Hello and welcome back to my Factorio 1.0 tutorial Let's Play series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. And uh, as always, we are back where we left off. I've not done anything without you. And we have two main goals in mind for this episode. Uh, we are going to build a proper gear production uh, area. And we are also going to build a circuit production area. And we're going, well, that is the two things. Uh, but in terms of actual builds th those are the two things but in addition to that uh, we're going to go over ratios and I think it's a good time because I built these without really explaining why I built this amount in in, in what I was thinking with the ratios on those uh, because I just did not want to jam pack too much info into last episode uh, speaking of last episode uh, your feedback was fantastic I, I I can't believe how much uh, how much you guys enjoyed it I, I can I can just tell by the by the likes and uh, in the comments and stuff and I really appreciate it I'm really glad you guys enjoyed that one so much and uh, hopefully this one will be just as good so uh, we're gonna cover ratios on these and then I am gonna go into ratios uh, from this point on uh, for nearly everything especially circuits circuits have a very specific ratio for them to produce optimally and uh, I can't really build the build without explaining the ratios otherwise it's just not really gonna make sense why I'm doing what I'm doing uh, so I think it is about time we go into those. Uh, let's start with the red science ratio here, uh, and then we are going to work on the build. So I built five machines making red science, and I did this for a very specific reason. Uh, I did this based on the amount of time it takes to craft a, sci a red science automation science pack here. Uh, as you can see down there, it takes five seconds to craft. Now, this is where I may... Uh, it, it make it a little confusing and there may be some uh, controversy with this uh, because there's kind of two ways to calculate ratios and, and two ways people like to build to ratios if you like to at all if, if you don't care about the ratios that is completely fine if you just want to build how many of these you want go for it nothing wrong with that uh, you know you may run out of materials you may overproduce but there's that, that's fine you know that's part of the game part of the learning experience that's okay uh, so the way I like to do this, the way I've always liked to do this, and the way I was taught to do this by uh, experienced players when I, uh, you know, was learning the game way back when, uh, is to calculate uh, on what is referred to as base rate craft speed. And I did touch on this last episode, I believe, but I didn't actually uh, mention this name specifically. Uh, so base rate craft speed is the craft speed you see on an item recipe, uh, on any item recipe. The, the craft speed you see there is the base rate craft speed. This is how long it takes to craft the item at a craft speed of 1, which is the player, uh, like my character's craft speed, that is the base craft speed. Uh, however, as I did mention briefly in a previous episode, uh, machines have different craft speeds, and this of course then affects how long it's actually going to take to make the item. Uh, so if we had something w with a craft speed of 2, like a machine, say we had a, an assembler, for example, that could craft a craft speed of 2, uh, this is now only going to take 2.5 seconds, right? Because uh, it's crafting at twice the base craft speed of 1. I hope that makes sense. Uh, the reason I calculate on base rate craft speed is because you don't have to then take into account the craft speed of everything, all like every building you're doing, uh, for every build you're doing. Uh, it, it just makes calculating way easier. Uh, now, it doesn't... W w the, the disadvantage to this, and this is maybe why some people don't like it, uh, is because this doesn't give you like a true craft rate uh, to, to what your assemblers are actually doing. Uh, so for this example, I built five because the base craft speed is five seconds, and I like to build my science packs uh, initially just as a starting point to produce one per second. Sometimes I will pr uh, make them so they can produce two per second, uh, but typically I like to do it for one a second. Uh, so if they take five seconds, if I want to make one every second, we are going to need five assembling machines doing that, uh, assuming a base craft speed of one. Uh, however, these assemblers actually are slower than that. They are a craft speed of 0.5. Uh, so they actually take twice as long. These are actually going to take uh, 10 seconds to make one of these. Uh, so if I actually wanted a, a true craft rate of one per second, 
uh, based on, on the actual assembly craft speed, I would need to build 10 of these. Uh, and I, I could do that. And you, you know, may seem like, well, why would you, you know, if, if you actually want one a second, why would you do base craft rate when you, that's not actually going to give you what you want? Uh, it, because this just makes it easier to calculate everything across the board, like not just science. Uh, like when it comes to uh, circuits, when we go over the ratio for those, uh, that's also going to be going with the base craft rate, great, uh, base craft speed, and uh, it's going to be a lot easier than calculating uh, calculating in the craft speed of whatever machine you're using. These are easy because it's just 0 0.5, which is half of a base craft rate, but then like things like the next level assembling machine, which we haven't unlocked, has a craft speed of 0.75, which complicates things a little bit. The last one you can get has a craft speed of 1.25. Uh, so having to calculate that every single time you make something, rather than just going off what the recipe says, I find to be much more complicated and unnecessary. Uh, so that's that's just my reasoning here. A lot of players do it this way. Some players don't like doing it this way. Some players like just doing it based on the speed of the uh, machine, you know, the speed that it crafts, and that's totally okay too. But I did want to explain why I did it this way. So let's move on to our gear production. Now we need a little bit of iron here for these assembling machines. Uh, so we're going to pick this up because we actually want this just a, a little bit farther away here than where we placed it. Pull this up a bit. That was a very temporary setup just to get uh, a slight bit of science production going there to close out the episode last time. Uh, I'm going to make another lab. Uh, what I like to do is build my next science, my green science, which we have not unlocked yet, uh, on the other side of this because that just easily puts it on the opposing side of the belt so we just automatically get one belt with both those sciences on it. Uh, so I then like to put my laboratories uh, down here. I usually do put them on both sides of the belt just so we can just take advantage of that space. Uh, and I do like to put them farther away because that does allow expansion of the science. Uh, if I put it right next to it, then you know I may save on some power poles or something, but I'll have to move it if I want to expand my science. This is... Fortunately, these power poles have a very low reach distance, so we actually need two of them there. And there we go. I'm going to check pollution really quick. This base is making me very nervous. I think we may have to go deal with that soon. Uh, but let's work on gears. So, uh, gears, we already went over. That there's not really like an X amount of gears I like to make per second. Um, so... We don't really need to worry about like that type of ratio in this scenario. Uh, and there's not really like, there's not any other materials that need to go into it besides iron. Uh, you'll see with circuits why we need to start thinking about ratios more. So we're going to set gears and uh, I think I did go over this previously and I did go over this in my tutorial for, my standalone tutorial for basic hotkeys. But if we sh hold shift and right click this, you can copy this recipe and then hold shift and left click to paste it. Uh, you'll see me do that a lot and uh, I'll do it very quickly sometimes because you can actually just hold shift and drag or walk uh, over things. Uh, so I did want to just explain that one more time so it's not as confusing. Uh, and we're actually going to reverse these because I do want, uh, I would actually like a double sided belt of this and I'm now wondering if we have left enough room for ourselves. So hitting control C to copy this, uh, this is a total of 10 furnaces. This will be 20 and then this would be like 30. We don't need 30, we actually only need 24. So this should be enough room. Uh, I just wanna make sure that we're not going to run into this with our uh, furnace set up there. So uh, I actually do want gears on both sides here. Uh, I'll just keep that in mind. We certainly do not need four machines making gears right now. That is way overkill for what we need. In fact, even one was overkill, but we'll do two uh, just because we will need it later on for other things. We finished some turret research, which is fantastic. So here's the green science, the logistic science pack. Let's get that because we will work on that uh, here pretty soon. And let's move this iron over. So if we do like that, and I'm doing the underground here because we know we're going to have three more belts of copper. So I might as well put it here now rather than having to move it later. Uh, and this guy needs to move a little bit. Chop 
down this tree. And there we go. Let's throw some power on this and our gear production is done. Easy as that. Now, uh, someone did mention last episode, which I actually, I think I was aware of it and I just don't remember, like I never think about it because I always play with this unlocked, but uh, apparently, oh dear. Uh, apparently uh, this section here where I was like showing off uh, or, or mentioning the like copy paste copy uh you know cut paste feature uh i think that this like little addition to your hotbar is not actually unlocked initially uh, i think it, it needs to be unlocked through research or maybe like after you beat the game or something i feel like it's unlocked with with like logistics or something uh you, you know i know this is a tutorial and i should know this but i i never i never ha don't have it so I, I was actually a little surprised um, to be reminded that that's not there initially, but even if it's not there initially, um, I believe the hotkeys, like the ability to copy paste as I showed it, is a thing you can do initially. You may just not have this shortcut version of it, um, but the actual hotkey of Control C and Control V, um, I do believe are, are, are available from the get-go, so those should still be relevant, uh, even, even if it's your, your first time ever playing the game. Uh, but I did want to mention that because if you don't have this, uh, I believe it unlocks through some research not too late into the game. I really, I, I would need to look, I, I'll, I'll look on the wiki for next episode or you can look on the wiki. There's a lot of information there. Um, I forget what it is unlocked with logistics maybe. Uh, I just always have it unlocked. I think maybe just because I've beaten the game and, and then it just permanently stays unlocked. I'm not quite sure how they did that. I really don't know why. If this is not unlocked from the beginning. I don't know why that's the case. I, I really think it should be. Uh, so back to what we're doing here, the gears. We actually need to create a new section of our uh, kind of main bus here. Uh, we have our copper, we have our iron, uh, and then we need gears. Uh, again, I don't want to put gears directly next to this because we need to leave that spacing to run underground past it. Uh, now two lanes of gears might be a little ambitious uh, because uh, you know, not a ton of things use gears and they can be fairly material heavy in their consumption because again, remember they do take two iron just to make one of them. Uh, speaking of which, we should add a second set of inserters here until we unlock the higher version so this can work a little bit more efficiently. Uh, also, well, once we get this, we, or maybe we need electronics. We need electronics to get the fast inserters. So I'm gonna queue this up in my research queue. And now it's time to work on circuits. So this is where things get pretty interesting because I am I am quite tired of handcrafting circuits uh, by this point. Uh, and again, my research queue. Now this is not unlocked for your first game unless you set it to be unlocked uh, in your map settings when you create the map. And again, in the tutorial where I went over basic controls and map settings, uh, you can check that out. I, I show you how to uh, unlock it, to ha have this unlocked when you when you set up a map. I believe it's under advanced settings and it's usually like to, like after you've beaten the game or something, you need to set it to always. Uh, you can use a command once you're in game uh, to unlock it, but do keep in mind when you use commands in Factorio, uh, or, or most commands, um, it will disable all your achievements from, like you will not be able to get achievements in that particular save. So just be aware of that, uh, that that is something that can happen. So we're, we need to clear a little bit of space here. There's a lot of very unhealthy looking trees here. Uh, so we're actually going to build circuits uh, a little ways away because I really would like to build my green science right up against this, like right on the other side of that belt. Uh, we, we don't have to, I suppose. I suppose we could just build green circuits right here and then uh, bring the green packs over this way and merge them underneath. Uh, that's certainly a possibility. Although I kind of have an idea uh, of how much room we're going to need for our green science, so I can space the circuits out decently. Uh, However, rethinking this, and and I think it's important actually that that I haven't decided fully what I'm doing, and I and I'm waffling back and forth because this is something you'll do, and maybe this will illustrate some uh, some 
some thought processes and some you know some decisions that need to be made and, and maybe help you make those decisions yourself in, in your own game uh, so i'm waffling back and forth because uh, green science actually takes inserters and inserters actually require circuits uh, which is making me want to make circuits first uh, because as you can probably tell or would have an idea of uh, our main bus and our general resource flow is going downward like downstream in this case is going left to right uh, so having green science and inserter production here and then having circuit production over here means that some portion of our circuits are going to actually have to flow backwards to the green circuits, which is not a huge deal. I've done that many times and it, it's fine. Uh, it is slightly annoying, uh, especially later on. I, I, when you go to expand things, it can actually become quite frustrating. Uh, so I think I am actually going to build circuits next. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I would like to take advantage of the space for green science, but we can easily just build it a little ways down here and then just run the belt over and merge it. That is not really much of a problem. Uh, again, we want to leave plenty of room, even though there's not going to be green science here. Uh, I think just always leaving a lot of room is really, really smart. Maybe not quite as much room as we had there. Uh, so we're going to do a very specific setup for this green circuit build. And now it's time to talk about these ratios. So. A green circuit uh, takes one iron and three copper cable, and it takes half of a second, 0.5 seconds, to craft. Again, keeping in mind we are using base craft speed because I do not want to take into account uh, the craft speed of these assemblers into every single recipe I'm looking at. Uh, so three copper cable is what we're really interested in here. The iron we can just belt in, easy peasy, we're good to go. Copper cable, though, obviously requires another recipe to be made, the copper cable itself, from copper. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to directly insert, do direct insertion. And I know my red science has stopped, by the way. Um, the reason for this is because you make two cable per craft, and it creates very quickly. It also crafts in a half a second. Uh, to where belting cable is very, very suboptimal. Sub you, you really do not want to be belting cable. Uh, I want to try to avoid to tell you guys, like, you should do something this way, you shouldn't do something this way, because I really do believe that you should play the game however you want. And still, if you want to belt cable, go for it. But I really would highly suggest you not do this, because you are going to have major throughput problems uh, just due to the fact this produces so much cable so quickly, your belt's going to fill up so fast, and usually things that consume cable consume them so quickly that your belts are just going to be struggling so hard to keep up with the demand. Whereas you, when you directly insert, you eliminate kind of that middleman of the belts and just dump the circuits directly into the machine, uh, which also can very well, very nicely take advantage of inserter stack sizes, which we haven't really touched on. Uh, but inserters later on, you can get bonuses uh, or, or just types of inserters that can actually pick up more than one item in their hand at once. Uh, and this is when it really, really shines. Uh, so I mentioned that because this is this is how this build is going to work. Okay. Uh, so we need three copper every half second. Okay. This produces two copper every half second. Well, obviously one of these is not enough to support one of these, where we're one cable short here. Uh, if we made two of these, this would make four every half second. Uh, but then that's a bit too much, right? So we need to find we need to find uh, somewhere where these meet, and all the cable of is used, and uh, x amount of machines of green circuits are supplied successfully and fully. Uh, and this ratio then becomes uh, three cable machines feeding two electronic circuit machines. And uh, we it may seem like we skipped a step there, but in, in a lot of cases, it's actually easier to go backwards now at this point, uh, because if we just say, okay, well, we have two cable, two uh, circuit machines, uh, which means we're going to need six, right? Two times three, six uh, copper cable every half second. Well, two does evenly go into six three times. So we're lucky enough that these do craft at the same speed, which makes this so much easier. 
Uh, so this is how we arrive at the three cable to two circuit machine ratio. Uh, because this consumes six cable and a half a second uh, with two machines. And to create six cable and a half a second, we need three machines. And it's all consumed. It, it, there, there's no leftover. There's no overproduction. It all, you know, there's no uh, lack of production for this. It, it all works perfectly. So uh, this is how we arrive at this ratio. And this is why uh, we build at this ratio. And it's going to look something like this. Now, there are different variants of this. Let me reconnect my gear belt here before I forget. Um, but uh, yeah, there are different, uh, you know, little variants you can do just mostly in just the arrangement of those and, and how you how you arrange them very slightly. Uh, this one, I think, just looks nice. You, you can do it. I mean, if, if you don't really care if they're like evenly spaced, you can certainly do that or something. I don't think it looks as nice. Uh, there's just little movement variants. Uh, but the reason we, we do it in this type of layout, I mean, we already know the number, uh, but there are different ways you could do it. The reason I like to do it this way, uh, again, the copy paste, shift right click, shift left click. Uh, the reason I like to do it this way is because this works out very well in the fact that uh, we can have these two outside machines solely supplying one uh, circuit machine themselves and then this middle machine uh, kind of fills in the gaps and actually splits its production uh, between both of these uh, so this is going to actually it's just going to work out really well considering uh, you know provided everything is actually supplied fully as it needs to be and and everything like that this will work fully there should be no bottlenecks there should be no halting uh, if there are is halting it'll actually be due to uh, how fast our inserters can move things right now until we get these quicker ones unlocked. Um, so this is what we're looking at for our circuit production. Now we are going to need some of these long handed inserters and this is the first time we've actually looked at these. Uh, these uh, work identical to normal inserters. They just reach an extra tile. Uh, so, you know, these inserters can only reach one space away from them like this. Uh, long handed inserters can reach uh, that extra space. Uh, when you put them up against here, they actually do have the potential to reach uh, yet another space if you do something like this. Uh, you can tell if it's able to reach the machine when it highlights it in white there. Uh, so, and I will be taking advantage of something much like this later on when we make uh, some some types of engines. Uh, I will be taking advantage of, of this type of placement. Uh, but you can actually reach three tiles now if you do something like this. Uh, this is not nearly as common, but it is really, really nice to be able to do in certain situations. Uh, so these guys, they, they work exactly the same. They, they just reach farther, which is really, really nice. Okay, so we've now unlocked the ability to use these fast inserters. They took, do take uh, the previous inserter to make as well as circuit. So I, I would actually be intelligent here to pick these up so we have them. And then we can just make these without having to make more there. Uh, in the long-handed inserters here, we're going to use uh, either to dump these circuits onto a belt or to pick up iron from a belt. It really doesn't matter as much. I honestly switch it just randomly every single time I build this. Like, like it just switches back and forth. There's no rhyme or reason to it for me. Uh, you know, this outputs a circuit every half second. This inputs an iron every half a second. Uh, it, it's not like one is going to be moving throughout the system faster. So it, it really just doesn't matter to me which, what if we're picking up or we're dropping somewhere uh, i'm just gonna i guess just have it drop off the circuits on this belt and then these fast inserters here are going to pick up iron and the fast inserters again work absolutely identical to these inserters they have the same reach they just move faster as you can see here this has a rotation speed of 302 degrees a second whereas this one is 864 degrees per second uh so it's more than double as fast it's uh really uh actually slightly more than Two and a half times as fast so it's it's really quite quick uh so we're gonna do this and need one more of these and we're just gonna do fast inserters on this entire thing because we're going to just be uh, crafting so quick this is just a very very fast moving recipe system here so we now have those unlocked i do think we really need to go deal with let's let's get some steel uh we really need to go deal with the bugs <laughs> Here, uh, that that was a very small attack, but uh, as I'm learning, I, I str I've streamed the last few days, and uh, on my stream, 
I, I'm having some major issues with the enemies. Uh, so I, I'm remembering you need to deal with them swiftly and, and efficiently uh, because otherwise you get overrun or you can get overrun. And I am experiencing that in my stream playthrough. So I want to obviously avoid that happening here. In fact, we actually have a base we're going to butt heads with here coming up not too far away. So that's going to be something we need to take into account. Uh, so this iron, we're just going to line this splitter up here. And there was something else I thought I needed to touch on a minute ago. And unfortunately, it has left my brain. Uh, we will, I'm sure I will remember, probably like right after I'm done recording. Uh, okay, so this splits, how on, what am I doing here? Okay, sometimes I get a little lost in what I was planning originally, so let's get that done. Okay, so here's our iron. We're now gonna have this, and as you might imagine, just with, with, uh, with the gears here, uh, we're going to mirror this setup over here. So we're gonna have two gear machine, two circuit machines here. Uh, I'm ghost placing these. We already went into ghosts, but you can actually manually place ghosts uh, by holding down shift when you place a building or, or really anything, building, inserter, belt, whatever you want. Uh, so I, I'm just taking this as if I were normally placing it instead of placing it just with left click, I'm holding shift while I do left click. And you can see it's bringing up the little ghost icon there cute little ghost that will indicate it is going to place a ghost. And uh, this is a very good way to plant things. And as you can see, I did mention this last episode, if there's a rock or a tree in the way or cliffs, uh, it will mark them for deconstruction, which is something that, uh, I mean, you can obviously just deconstruct it. Uh, once we get robots, which is quite a bit later into the game, they will just deconstruct it for us. Uh, but that is obviously quite a bit later on. No need to dive into that right now. Uh, let's get some steel axe that will allow us to just pick things up and mine things quicker and heavy armor would be good uh, I think yeah, we're not gonna build this right now We certainly don't need this many but I do like to plan this out just to have it kind of visually uh, In my view and and then also just for spacing reasons. Uh, it's quite nice uh, So we're gonna bring this out and yet again, we need to add this to another section of our uh, bus. Now, I do, I do really like to do or, or have the potential to do four lanes of circuits. Uh, this can be quite hard to supply, but you actually do end up needing a lot of circuits throughout the game. Uh, so, part of me wants to do four belts. Part of me wants to just add an additional two to this gear set and just call it done. Uh, two two belts of circuits can be pretty decent. Uh, honestly, unless we're going really mega base, uh, which I suppose we could do, uh, but I don't know if I would do that with belts. And, and I know mega base is, is not really a term that uh, you guys may be familiar with if you're new to the game. Uh, that's just a term of just building a massive factory in the game. Uh, and there's really no need to go into that right now. It's mostly just how much circuits do I want? How much do I want to plan for? And I, I think it is a safe bet um, for this particular playthrough and scenario to do two lanes of circuits. This will get us easily to the end game. Uh, this will allow us to be, beat the game, complete the goal. Uh, you can, of course, play after you've completed the goal and beat the game. Uh, you can definitely do that. Uh, and we may, uh, we, we definitely may do that, but like two lanes of circuits should have no problem getting us there. So I'm not really worried about that. Uh, we actually need to curve this in like that. It's a little bit wonky, but just how it works out sometimes. And there we go. So this one's going to be circuits. This is obviously circuits. And then this is going to be gears and, uh, going to have those there. I think this is a pretty good time to wrap up, but just because I'm getting a little nervous and I might forget next episode, I think as something to send us off for this episode, uh, I'm going to attempt to go deal with those enemies up top there and show you some offensive combat. Uh, I think maybe two of those would be smart. Uh, okay, maybe make some of this. Just making a bunch of military things. Not going to be done by the time we get up there. So, uh, to touch on combat, we will go much into that later. 
much deeper into that, and I will probably be doing a standalone tutorial for that, in fact. Uh, but, uh, oof, there is. So this is, I was referring to these, I think, at one point. This These are worms. Uh, these are basically the artillery of the enemy. And uh, this can get this can get a little hairy with these guys early game. Uh, so a safe method, you, you, if it's just like one spawner, you can probably pretty safely just walk up and shoot it and shoot the biters that just come running towards you. Uh, I would still suggest having armor on. Uh, but when it's like two bases like this and a worm, uh, we're put into a situation where... Uh, what we call turret creeping. If you've played other uh, similar type of games, uh, I mean, you, you may know the term turret creeping. Uh, this is basically where we just place turrets down and let the turrets push for us. Um, I am going to just shoot these guys myself so I can quickly walk forward. And I'm going to spam these down as quickly as I can and fill them with ammo. Uh, again, taking advantage of our shift, uh, shift right click keys there to uh, do that, and I do want to be very mindful of our... Oh dear, I might actually die here. Whew, these worms are deadly. Okay, we survived. We're not done yet. So I'm going to pick up some fish. So you can right-click on fish, and uh, these can actually act as a healing source. If you take it in your hand and left-click, these will actually heal you. Uh, these turrets are severely damaged I think we get I think we got this if we just repair these turrets we do want to be quick about it though because these uh, enemy bases and worms will regenerate their health which as you might imagine is not great uh, for us <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of switching back and forth here between the two, and we got them. Okay, whew. That was <laughs> one repair. So it does take a little bit of, uh, you know, just gun ho and, and going forward, and you may die. And, and <laughs> you know, that may just happen. We got very lucky not to die there. Um, so we managed to clear that out, and as I did mention, I think in the first episode, uh, the only reason you'll get attacked is from pollution actually hitting the enemy bases. So now we have no bases in our pollution range unless they expand into it. So we should not be expect we should not be attacked at all uh, until they expand into it or po or pollution expands like onto this base. Uh, this one was very very close, or I guess was at one point because we did get attacked. Um, so taking care of that is just kind of peace of mind. And uh, I think this is a good place to stop. You, you, you did notice that I made another weapon, a shotgun, and I switched between them. The hotkey for this is Q, or sorry, tab. It used, I think it used to be Q a long time ago. Uh, it's tab. So you, this, again, if you like play shooters or something, I think a lot of them use this hotkey. Um, you can just tab between them. You can have a, a third set here. Uh, and much like you can set filters in your hotbar, you can actually filter your weapon tab. So if I middle mouse click on this, um, what it's going to do is it's going to make it so that only um, only this gun and only this type of ammo can go in that slot, which is really nice because in, uh, when you die and pick things back up, it's going to put them in the slot you had that you're used to instead of some other slot and then you may end up dying because of that and you can't uh, reach it or you try to shoot where there's no weapon. And uh, there we go. So that's a that's this episode guys i think it's a wrap we made gears we made circuits we went over some ratios we went and killed a biter base and next episode we will work on green science that should be very easy to get done in that episode because we have all the intermediates getting the intermediates done is usually the hardest part for these recipes for these science pack recipes and uh so we'll probably get green science done along with some other things because it really should be quite quick uh and that's gonna do it as always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and found it useful. And if you did, a like is much appreciated so it can help other people find this and hopefully, uh, you know, get some useful information and help them along as well. And uh, if you're new to the game, welcome. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe to uh, be updated on all the new content. I will be doing a lot of content for 1.0 here. 
and uh, I'm very, very excited for the future of that. I hope you guys are as well. Leave your thoughts and feedback below, as always. I really do appreciate it, and I do my best to read it and respond, and uh, I am looking through the feedback for these and trying to improve each episode. So thank you so much, guys. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.